ESPN and CBS. First Canada MC, Karthik, Kana, Gassa, Bapathy. Special episode of First Canada Live, our 2021 First Canada Ontario FRC District Awards show. That's right, it's a gala tonight, and we're doing it big because that's how we do it, you know. On tonight's show, we're going to be recognizing and honoring some of the amazing individual accomplishments in our community and during the 2021 season. We've got Stemathon winners, top students for the Dean's List Award, and of course, the most prestigious award in all of FRC, the Chairman's Award. It's all happening tonight. We know that this is not a traditional award ceremony where you're surrounded by your teammates. However, we can never cease to be amazed by the resiliency of this community in the face of adversity. This year has been totally different than anything we've experienced before, but you've all managed to come together and make something beautiful happen and still celebrate everything that's good about FIRST, and that's an accomplishment in itself. So we thank everyone for joining us today for this virtual ceremony, an online gala to celebrate your excellence and gracious professionalism. It's going to be a great show and it's jam-packed, so let's get started. Please welcome to the stage, First Canada FRC Director and 2009 Woody Flowers Finalist Award winner, Mr. John Hobbin. Hello, team members, teachers, mentors, and to everyone in the FIRST family. I am your FRC Director and I'm absolutely thrilled to be here with you this evening as we recognize and celebrate our outstanding award candidates. You know, much of my work in this past year has been behind the scenes where I have witnessed outstanding collaboration, incredible creativity as I watched in awe the First Canada staff as they found new ways to successfully pivot throughout 2020 and 2021. The successful Semathon this past weekend and tonight's awards gala are a couple examples of how we continue to create new ways to provide you with valuable and meaningful first experiences. I know that each and every one of you would be willing to give, or join me in giving a huge shout out to the First Canada staff for brilliantly carrying out their work this past year. And to you, all the team members who have found new ways to keep the spirit of FIRST alive and well, not only through participating in the challenges, and award activities, but by finding unique and helpful ways to support your communities. Kudos to all of you. Now, I will say that I've had the opportunity to see the list of nominees for tonight's awards, and I can tell you that I am sincerely moved and humbled to know what wonderful human beings we have in FIRST. And I can confidently say how obvious it is that the FIRST experience impacts broadly and meaningfully as it magically positions youth for success. And to you, our incredible youth, who continue to impress as you shape your journey, your career pathway through our FIRST programs. I would like you to know that all of us here at FIRST Canada are incredibly proud of each and every one of you. Now I'd like to ask you to take a moment and to reflect on your own personal FIRST journey as I mentioned the next couple of statements to you now. We can choose to be affected by the world or we can choose to affect the world. Everyone can do simple things to make a difference and every little bit really does count. Now, whether you're an award winner here tonight or not, each one of you has already made a difference. And as Gandhi once said in a gentle way, you too can shake the world. On behalf of my colleagues and myself, I'd like to express thanks to everyone for all you continue to do and to bestow best wishes and good luck to all. Back to you, Karthik. Thank you, John. Now, please welcome the director of the first robotics competition, Frank Merrick. Hello, FIRST Robotics Competition teams. My name is Frank Merrick. I'm the director of FRC, and welcome to your awards show. What a crazy season 2021 was, and I, for one, am, fingers crossed, hoping we can get together again in person for official events in 2022. But in the meantime, congratulations to all the award winners and everyone who participated this year. Have a great show. 
Thank you, Frank. And now, here to recognize the first supporters for the first Game Changers powered by Star Wars Force for Change season is Blair from First Headquarters. Every year, First and you benefit from the support of hundreds of generous sponsors, suppliers, scholarship providers, and alliances. We deeply appreciate their commitment and dedication and are especially grateful during this challenging season. A big thanks to everyone who makes first, first. weekend, First Canada held a STEMathon for over 100 participants that included students across Canada mentored by First alums and volunteers. The students worked in teams of three to five to solve real world problems and come up with innovative solutions relating to this year's theme. After developing their solution, they then had to deliver a five minute pitch to the judges, and they all had to do this in just over 24 hours. So here's a look at this year's STEMathon theme. Where I come from, I am so fortunate I could still drink the water from the lake. But sometimes I question it. Not far from where I live, there are communities that have lived through boil water advisories. We all have a right to this water as we need it. Not just rich people, all people. No one should have to worry if the water is clean or if they will run out of water. The right to learning. I simply ask that the right to learning should be given to every child. I live in a world that wasn't built for me. But what if it was? If everything was made accessible? Making the world more accessible is not only easier than you might think, it's more beneficial. That's right, the theme was limitless accessibility. Teams had to come up with a product or process to address accessibility issues in today's society. And boy, are there a lot of them. This required them to use their STEM problem solving skills, coupled with a true sense of empathy to help break down systemic barriers. Tonight, we're fortunate to have three of the top award-winning teams from the STEMathon here to present their pitches so we can all learn about their amazing innovations. And like seriously, prepare to be wowed by everything we've got going on here. Cause like I saw a lot of these pitches and these are like the best of the best and these are like something else. Very, very cool. So first, let's meet the winners of the 2021 First Canada STEMathon Best Project Award who were each given a brand new 15 inch Samsung Chromebook courtesy of Synex Canada. Here's Team 20, the Krant Soldier with Rhea C. Nuba K, Abir K, Katarina FB, Thuva Ragan P, and their mentor, Angela Bai. Hi, my name is Katarina Bai, and I'm 
my name is Angela, and this past weekend, I had the absolute privilege of serving as the mentor for Team 20 in the semifinal. I didn't know what to expect from this event, but I certainly didn't expect to see these five students design and develop an entire swimming safety device for children that are neurodivergent or living with disabilities. After the event, all I can really remember thinking was how thrilled I was that Abir, Katarina, Nuha, Ria, and Tuvarigan are going to become our future leaders and innovators, one cute cat picture at a time. So without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce you to Team 20, the Krant Soldiers, and their Vibranium quality product. Swimming is one of the first things we learn to do independently. It gives children a sense of freedom and capability, but for children with disabilities, swimming can be just another reminder that they are different. Many minorities consider swimming to be an emotional and physical buffer rather than an enjoyable activity, as they require more safety precautions while in the water, although not without reason. Drowning is the third leading cause of unintentional death in children, and children with autism hold two times the risk. According to UNICEF, an overwhelming 98% of these deaths occur in low and middle income countries. In the example code I had prepared before, um, out of 1,114 children living with ASD who died in their childhood, 1,014 of them died due to drowning. H2O Float is a solution targeted specifically towards children with disabilities. Unlike a life jacket, which is bulky and inhibiting, it gives children the mobility to swim deeper using an airbag that packs compactly into a wristband. Its design is discreet and portable, allowing children with disabilities to swim safely, just like every other kid, and give them a sense of normalcy at an affordable price with additional features. When there's a fluctuation in your heart rate, three systems will trigger. The alarm, which will, can be manually shut off. It will chime recurrently from these speakers to alert the people in the vicinity. And a signal will be sent to an external receiver, meaning a warning on the parent's phone. The airbag has a buoyancy of 150 newtons, which will be strong enough to pull you up from the bottom and keep an 150 pound person afloat. It runs off a single restockable cartridge of carbon dioxide. The airbag is bright orange to be easily visible and can be deflated manually so it is reusable. There is a programmed microchip with a code for the device to trigger the hatch with the correlating heart rate drop or spike. Our product uses PPG to track the heart rate of a child. PPG is inexpensive, small, and highly portable. Through the use of high precision LEDs, the volume of blood flow is detected to sense fluctuations in heart rate. The purpose of the sensor is to track when the wearer's heart rate exceeds certain thresholds of BPM. Because one's resting heart rate varies by age and weight, it will need to be set manually through an app that is downloadable on the parent's phone. The band will connect automatically when in range using Bluetooth. The band of H2O Float is made of lycra and silicone to make it comfortable for young children. As the wristband is small, it would be better for children living with high sensory sensitivity. This is because the wrist is only covered and not the whole body like with a life jacket. Silicone is durable and more ocean friendly than plastic. It lasts longer and stands up better against different temperatures. The size of the band is adjustable to ensure it does not fall off the wrist. It is also tight heart rate. As our mentor Megan had brought up, we decided to choose the small 3.6 volt lithium ion battery for our power source. It can charge faster, last longer, and have a higher power density for more battery life in a lighter package. Additionally, the battery is environmentally sustainable and safe for everyday usage. The double layered band will prevent the water from leaking in after harsh use, since the sturdy material will prevent abrasions and tears. The floaty is made of thermoplastic polyurethane or TPU. TPU is tear resistant and reusable. It is strong enough to keep a child afloat, but it is not thick enough for the child to get trapped beneath the floaty. 
It is important to us that the H2O flow be fully autonomous as young children and children living with disabilities might panic when they go underwater and be unable to follow directions or trigger an airbag or alert on their own. The band costs no more than the average strap watch and the sensor and Bluetooth are low cost, making it more affordable than other drowning prevention devices on the market. Life jackets and wrist floaties cost roughly the same price with much less functionality and durability. Additional funding for this product may be raised through campaigns and used watch drives and distribution through sponsors such as the Life Saving Society and a companion website. We hope H2O Float would be able to make safe swimming more accessible for people from all social economic backgrounds. No child deserves to drown because their family can't afford to save them and no child deserves to feel left out. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to Team 20 for that great presentation. You know, I think what really struck me that, well, I mean, there were a lot of things that really struck me there, but, you know, no, no child deserves to be left out. And I think that was one of the beautiful things about the STEMathon is how much empathy was being shown in these types of solutions. But also think about what they just came up with there. They did, they got the challenge at 12 noon and they had to present sometime between like 8.30 and noon the next day. So less than 24 hours to brainstorm an idea, cut, pick an idea, then actually start working towards a solution. They catted up a prototype. They wrote specific code to do simulations and to kind of prove their concept. And then they had to develop a pitch and an infographic. So all these things were being done by the team and it was just very, very impressive. So congratulations to Team 20. No surprise that you won that award. Very well deserved. And that was great. But guess what? We've got more STEMathon presentation and pitches to take a look at. So let's meet the winners of the 2021 First Canada STEMathon Best Pitch Award, who were each given a brand new ViewSonic webcam courtesy of Synex Canada. Here's Team 7, the Virtual Schemers, with Lauren W, Emily W, Maeve G, Leia T, and their mentor, Nikita Jotsangani. This, this weekend, I got the chance to meet the amazing students of Team 7. For just about 22 hours straight, these students were working on developing the solution that you are about to see for a problem that impacts people from all over the world. All the way from Sandwich Secondary School in Windsor, Ontario, meet the legendary exceptional innovators, the Virtual Steamers. As everyone knows, menstruation is a common occurrence. All individuals who menstruate can attest to the fact that the products are very expensive yet very necessary. Isn't it troubling how limited access to a steady income affects many diverse people's access to these products? 84% of menstruating individuals feel as if they aren't included in activities while in their cycle, and one quarter have said they've experienced inadequate access to hygiene products. All the needed products can be especially difficult for those in underserved communities to obtain. When individuals who menstruate don't have access to products, they may have to stay home from school or work, making them lose out on opportunities that they deserve. Before we go any further, let us introduce ourselves. We are the Virtual Steamers. Our main group consisted of one amazing mentor and three high school students who were able to come up with a solution to a very widespread problem. Introducing the Menstrual Mate a monthly subscription box, nonprofit that has the items you may need when it's your time of the month. Today we'll cover our solution, rationale, functionality, and design stage of our product. This product not only gives easier access to those who are more fortunate, but also to those who are less fortunate. With our buy one, give one program, with every box sold, we will send out a period package to those in need. When coming up with this idea, we had originally planned on using reusable cups and panties in our boxes. But we eliminated these options because it would be unsanitary for those who don't have access to clean water to reuse the products without a proper wash. This market is extremely profitable with expected growths in the subscription box and menstrual industries. Also note that there's always going to be a demand for menstrual products. Additionally, our online selection for products allows for a reduction of human contact in stores, which can help reduce the risk of COVID-19 exposure. 
The only competitors we have within this subject only sell reusable products, which is not at all inclusive to people who may not have the right sanitation. Some competing brands to our business include Bloomtopia and Ruby Cup. Bloomtopia is a menstrual product subscription service, but has no buy one, give one component. Component. Ruby Cup offers a buy one, give one program. However, there is no subscription service. With the buy one, give one program, we can help to increase accessibility limitlessly all over the world, making menstruation an easier thing for individuals to deal with. Out of the 50 people we pulled, 100% of people said they would more, be more likely to use the subscription box, knowing that we will be donating period boxes to those in need. Menstrual Mate offers multiple tiers of boxes based on what products you prefer. All tiers will have either pads, tampons, or both, as well as one week's worth of nighttime pads. Our products will be packaged discreetly, especially for our closeted LGBTQ customers, with user instructions and health tips included each month. Tier 1 and Tier 2 are the basic boxes. They include the approximate amount of pads or tampons for the usual cycle, and both cost around $25. The third and fourth tier have the same amount of pads or tampons with the addition of seven chamomile tea bags, which can help ease pain, as well as shea butter facial moisturizer for only $42. The fifth tier is just a basic box with both pads and tampons, which costs $36. The sixth and final tier has a combination of all products in one box for the final price of $45. We also plan to promote through social media on all platforms. Social media advertising is proven to work, is cheap, and allows us to reach a wide audience. Our SWOT analysis shows that we can easily tackle our strengths, weaknesses, opportunity, and threats in the market. On top of sourcing products from wholesalers, we chose shipmonth.com for our fulfillment needs. We'll buy storage space, adding them into the cost of each box. When this business grows, we would have access to get larger fulfillment centers. All our profits will go back into the Horizons for Youth, the youth shelter in Toronto. We believe that overall, our menstrual mate is a plausible idea with the potential to make a difference in countless lives. The idea promotes inclusivity, has the potential to create real impacts, and is financially sound. By spreading access to these essential products in a financially sustainable way, we can give people the opportunity to live free of barriers formed by an uncontrollable process, including scheduling issues in professional life, poor schooling attendance, and self-esteem issues. Though many people may not realize it, providing period products to those who need it is a form of equity. Period. We would like to thank our mentor advisement, Praneet Trivedi, Karen Lee, Sydney Lamar, and a special thanks to our mentor, Nikita Jotsingani. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, we've got to talk about Team Seven's pitch right there because that was so incredibly polished. It's like the pitch you would expect for people who'd been working on a startup for like two years. They had less than 24 hours. Like that pitch was seamless, the transitions and all that. But not to like, you know, let's not bury the lead here. The actual project concept was really brilliant. And there was so much research put into it. The business plans, the competitive analysis, the understanding of the market and actually coming up with a solution that is going to help people. So I'm really excited to see what these teams are going to do going forward. It's really amazing. And again, 24 hours. This STEMathon was a beautiful experience. I think what I appreciated most about the STEMathon was there was over 100 students and you know almost 30 mentors working together in a Slack group, and it felt kind of like an event. There was just a lot of sharing going on, a lot of helping each other out, a lot of joking around, a lot of party parrots. It was a good time. So great job by these teams. But we have one more STEMathon pitch to look at, and it is, well, technically the best because now let's meet the overall winners of the 2021 First Canada STEMathon, who were each given a brand new Lenovo V15 notebook courtesy of Cinex Canada. Here is Team 17 Wonder Vision with Nikki Q, Victoria Z, Pauline L, Megan G, Caitlin C, and their mentor, Megan McEwen. Thanks, Karthik. Hello, esteemed guests. I am so excited to tell you this, that this evening, in just a few seconds, you're going to have the opportunity to hear about a game-changing new startup created by this team, Team Wonder Vision. This team has put an incredible amount of thought and vision into their concept. They are meticulous, they're dedicated, and they're committed to increasing accessibility and sustainability with their design. 
I know you're going to love it as much as I did and really catch the vision for Wonder Vision. So please welcome uh, Team Wonder Vision, Victoria, Nikki, Megan, Caitlin, and Pauline. Good evening, everyone. Today we propose Wonder Vision. Before we talk more about what we have to offer, we'd like to discuss a very serious but rarely addressed issue. Thank you, Kingan. Have you ever noticed how many people wear glasses? Well, each one of them has paid steep prices for one thing the other takes for granted, 2020 vision. Did you know that a pair of glasses can cost over $1,000, yet cost as little as two to $10 to make, especially since 65% have to pay out of their own pockets. These prices are way too high for most people to afford. And this high cost is intentional. Two global eyewear giants, Luxottica and Essilor, are the major reason that eyewear is so expensive in North America. Together, they're worth almost $70 billion and own most brands and stores. Power of this monopoly, these companies can and do raise prices by the hundreds. Not only are glasses super expensive, but many people don't live close enough to an optometrist to get their needed prescription. You're right, Victoria. I actually have a personal connection with this problem. A few of my family members live in Sioux Lookout a community near Thunder Bay, where the nearest optometrist is over an hour away and is always fully booked months in advance. Even though over half the population needs glasses, the ridiculously high inflation rates and lack of eye clinics around us in Northern Ontario means that most people aren't able to see properly. But don't worry, we're here to end this evil. To ensure accessibility to affordable eye care and glasses, our team has created Wonder Vision, a service that brings free eye testing to remote areas and sells glasses for low prices. Here we simplify the whole process in two easy steps. First, you download our app or go onto our website, which runs seven basic eye tests in multiple languages and visuals to determine which part of your eyesight needs help. This will help us figure out which part of your vision needs more comprehensive testing when you meet with an optometrist, decreasing the time it takes for each appointment and allowing the optometrist to see way more patients. On the Apple website, you can also customize what you want your glasses to look like if you need them. You can experiment with all kinds of frame shapes and colors and using AR technology, we will dimension it to perfectly fit your face. The app will also generate a QR code from all of the information to show your optometrist. Later, they'll know what areas you need more detailed testing on. Even without our phone, this service is accessible. The test can be accessed on a community computer through our website, or if you still can't get to the site, it's okay since using it simply helps save some time during your consultation. The second step is to visit our mobile clinic to meet a certified optometrist and get a free eye consultation. The truck will arrive based on the schedule posted in the app and also on posters in your local community buildings. These optometrists finish your testing, provide you with a prescription and help you in order and pay for your customized pair of glasses. And then one week later, you receive your perfect pair of glasses through the mail. You might be wondering how we'll run things from the business side. We will be running two sister organizations, one to provide eye testing services and one to sell affordable glasses. Our first organization, Vision Ben, will be in charge of free eye tests and will be a certified charity. We'll get funding from the provincial and federal government and donations from companies and individuals. Since we would be a charity, we would be eligible for many grants from the government and would be able to offer tax refunds for donors. These donations and grants will fund the optometrists, trucks, and equipment. We will also get volunteers to help with organizational activities. Our second organization, Wonder Frames, will be a nonprofit in charge of selling and recycling 3D printed glasses. We will be 3D printing the glasses ourselves, purchasing the lenses from our partner Plastic Plus, and selling them at cost. We will also recycle old frames into more filament. We estimate the average cost of glasses will be around $20 to $30, significantly less than the industry standard. The revenue from the glasses will cover the cost of materials, production, and delivery. So far, we've made a prototype of the Wonder Vision app. We'll, we'll put up a demo of it now. So the first thing you'll see is the home screen or the hub of our website. Here, users will be able to access all functions of our app through a simple click of a button and learn more about our story. Next, we have the Wonder Frame section where users can upload a picture of themselves for correct sizing and choose their favorite frame shape. Once the frame shape is chosen, users will be able to pick a color and enter in their specific prescription. Finally, we have the vision band section. 
Here, users will be able to take a vision test, see past results, and download the van schedule to find out when we'll be in their area. Overall, we believe that the One Division organization will be able to overcome the lack of accessibility to eye care and products by providing eye care services to those who don't have access and selling glasses at affordable prices, we enable everyone to access healthy vision and contribute to creating a world with limitless accessibility. Thank you, and we hope you enjoyed our proposition. Congratulations and thank you to Team 17 on an amazing presentation, an amazing pitch, and an amazing Stamathon in general. This entire event was really special, and we just want to thank all the sponsors who put that together. And you know, everything we do at First Canada is possible because of the generous support of our sponsors. Through these sponsors, we at First Canada are able to bring you more opportunities and bring more opportunities to students to help transform lives. This year, our sponsors have generously helped us bring all our programs to you virtually, and including some new virtual programs like the Build It Challenge, Recharge Your Bot, and the STEMathon, as we just saw. These investments are for your future. So let's take a moment to thank the first Canvas sponsors. Thank you again to our sponsors for making our events possible. And speaking of making events possible, we need to thank and recognize all of the amazing volunteers who continue to step up and support our programs and teams this year. We know it's been a very challenging year, but we are so incredibly thankful and lucky to have all our volunteers. So let's take a moment to recognize all the Dean's List and Chairman's Judges for this season, led by our Ontario District Judge Advisor, Jim Del Genio. <laughs> Our judges are Adam Castle, Alex Taylor, Don McGrath, George Bouliellowin, Gordon Stubley, Grace Yu, Jatinder Chatha, Karen Lowe, Kathleen Blair, Manish Jane, Melissa Giamu, Michelle Lauderway, Pageant for Fer Boa, Ray Minato, Sean Smith, Thomas Polenio, Wendy Lowe Wilson, Becky Grasseran, and Stan Harvey. And now let's take a look at this video to learn a little bit more about what's it like to be a volunteer. Come be a volunteer, help build tomorrow. Volunteering that we do for FRC, best time of my life, it's awesome.
At FRC events, there were more than 120 people that are committed to making a difference for everyone involved. It's so rare to find somebody you're volunteering that you're so passionate about. You only find that with FIRST. I volunteer because I genuinely love what I do and I love to inspire kids as much as I was inspired back when I was competing. And you make amazing friends with these other volunteers. There's networking that happens. There's on-the-job training. There's a full gamut. There's no better way to spend a weekend. Volunteering for FIRST is an amazing experience. As an alumni of the program, I get to experience all the new teams, all the parents, all the new students, and we always have a party with everyone here. Come join the fun. Is there anywhere else you'd rather be than a FIRST event? Come join the fun. Come volunteer, help build tomorrow. You know, before we hand out our first set of awards tonight, we'd like to bring out, recognize, and have a chat with last year's Ontario Dean's List finalists. So, joining us here tonight, we have Zara from Team 5834, R3P2, Colton from Team 1305, Ice Cubed, Lucas from Team 7052, Falcotronics, Amna from Team 1374, Amped Up, and Ella from Team 7480, The Machine Mavericks. Hey everyone, so first of all, welcome, thank you for being here. It's so great to have last year's winners on a night when we're going to be recognizing this year's winners. And so I want to talk about that moment because, you know, you're the first group of Dean's List finalists who have won this award virtually. And, you know, we know what it's like in person with someone. We don't know what it's like because not all of us is one. Not, we're not all as talented and as lucky and as awesome as you. Mm -hmm. You know, but you, we see that moment. You come down from the stands. You shake hands with the judges. You get the big hug. You get a lot of excitement. What was it like winning virtually? So, Colton, maybe you, you want to start us off. Yeah, thank you, Karthik. Um, thanks for having me here today. Uh, but I remember uh, last year, uh, it was virtual, so we had our team set up a whole Zoom call to uh, be together for the different awards that were being handed out. Uh, we had it streamed on our, uh, we were showing the Twitch feed on our Zoom call, and then uh, things started to cut out. So I remember it was kind of a mad scramble to try and set things up uh, at my house and get a computer with the Twitch stream because we knew things were coming up. We didn't really know when it was happening. In the end, I ended up making it back, and I remember being super excited, and it was awesome to be able to celebrate with my team and my family. That's so great that you were able to have that, you know, sense of shared celebration despite, you know, what's all been going on. Zara, what about you? Um, I was in complete disbelief. I was like, what? How? So my mom and I were just, like, watching on my computer, and I was just like, what? How? How is this possible? No way. But after a while, I was like, wow, we did that. And I was pretty proud. You did that, Amna. You know, like, I'm really sorry, Zara, you did that. Uh, Amna, what was your experience like? Um, I agree with Zara. It was kind of, I mean, I was sitting there watching it to see um, my other friends who had done their interviews after the pandemic had hit. And I had no idea that the finalists were being um, announced. And I remember at one point, like all my teammates congratulating me, sending me texts. Some of my friends were FaceTiming me. My sister comes rushing in through the door, all excited. And I had no clue what was happening. And I'm just looking at the screen, absolute surprise. Like I, I wasn't expecting it at all. It was amazing. That's right. Cause Amra, you won your district at while their events were still going on. And then you won finals. Yeah, it was correct? one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so you had like that double slice of everything. That's really interesting. That's some neat perspective. Lucas, what was your experience like? I was lucky, uh, like Colton, I had my team. I was on a, a pretty big call with all of my team members just to see if I was going to get it. Uh, I didn't actually expect to, but when I did, I was super happy. I ran to my uh, mom and I told her, and uh, we had a big celebration. And uh, I was uh, very, very grateful to win the award. Did you get some cake with that celebration? Because every celebration is better. With I had uh, some Italian tiramisu, actually. It's oh, the best. very, very, very nice. That that's definite a win. I like prefer like vanilla birthday cake or whatever, but tiramisu is always good. Okay, Ella, how about you? 
Yeah, um, I guess it was kind of similar. We were watching the stream online. And I think ours was, our Wi-Fi was lagging a little bit. And my friend, she texted me in all caps and was like, yay, we did it. Um, or, and then, so somebody else sent a message to our Slack channel. It was big celebration. Hopefully I get to do the same thing for her tonight. Text her in all caps. <laughs> um, but yeah, pretty fun. Well, f- fingers crossed for your teammate. We're going to be revealing all the nominees yeah. and the, the winners in, in, in just moments. But, uh, you know, this pandemic, the season's been different, obviously. But, you know, things have been happening. How have you been adapting and what have you been up to first-wise? And, you know, we'll go backwards in order this time. So we'll start with Ella again. Yeah. Well, you know, I live in Kingston, so we've been pretty lucky that our COVID numbers have been relatively low. And we've, you know, been meeting sporadically at our workshop. Um, we have also set up a bunch of online calls. So we did all of our, you know, game design and project, uh, innovation project online. Um, so did some cool Rami robot programming. Um, so definitely a big change, but still a lot of first. And you participated in the STEMathon this past weekend. Yes. And I'm participating in the STEMathon. I'm still kind of recovering my on that but it's going well <laughs> i think we all were are recovering right there <laughs> lucas how, how's your year been yeah well for us the covid numbers have been uh, quite high we haven't uh, seen each other in quite a few months i'll say that uh so this year we've been kind of taking it as a break uh in terms of actual building we've just been building the team up in terms of our experience so we've been doing a lot of online calls just building up our uh, programming ability design ability and also working on recruiting new members for the years to come when covid hopefully isn't such a big factor and uh yeah it's just been fun actually like the past three years has been extremely hard work doing robotics almost all year round so even though COVID-19 really sucks, uh, it's been kind of nice to have a little bit of a break. Yeah, and, you know, obviously also, for so, for so many of you, I mean, you're all uh, in grade 12, I'm presuming, so this is like, you know, the, the end, and you have so many important things going on school-wise, I'm sure it's nice to be able to focus on that, especially with the challenges and differences with online learning, and there's a lot of adapting you all have been doing, and I've just been saying that, you know, our high school students, like, we owe a lot to a lot of different groups in our society, because a lot of people have given things up, but all of you, the grade 12s especially, to, you know, have this very different last year of high school, which is such a monumental point, we're just, you know, thankful for all of you for giving that up for the best of our society, so that is great. Um, now, what's your year been like? Um, we have gone completely virtual, just to try and keep distance, especially since we have two teams at our school. But it has been great. Um, Team 1374 has logged about 200 hours virtually since just January, which is amazing. Um, All the team members have been completely engaged and motivated, and they've all been doing such great work, um, especially with this transition to virtual. They've done a lot of stuff over social media and just promoting stuff where they can, promoting first where they can. Obviously, it's a lot harder with the pandemic, but they have, like, it's it's been great. And Zara, how's your year been? So our 3P2 has been a little unlucky. We didn't really get to return back this season because of COVID, especially since we want to work. We work better in person, especially, and it's been kind of difficult not having robotics. Whenever I think about March, I think about, Um, our Humber College competitions and just like all the crazy stuff we do but mostly we're just thinking about what's coming up in the future and what we can do and how we can change things and improve as a team like going going forward. I I know sorry like I had so much fun with our 3P2 at Humber last year and just like all the shout outs and the cheers and it was such a good time and yeah I miss that that was just like such a special I I miss your teams but I miss like all the teams your team specifically that was such a cool sort of moment Uh and Colton Colton I know 1305 has been really busy this year so what have you all been up to? Well, we've been uh, trying to stay connected. It's been uh, mostly virtual at this point. Uh, we were able to, when the cases go down, do a socially distanced uh, masked picture. And that was kind of the last time I saw my team, which was, I believe, maybe September, possibly even during the summer. I can't quite remember the exact dates. But uh, we have been working on some virtual events. I know uh, you actually joined us at uh, the first Gateway Conference, which was lots of fun and uh we we had a lot of fun with uh, our other first 
uh, teams that joined us. But uh, right now, we've just been working through the seasons, uh, new challenges that FIRST has, has been offering us. So that's been really fun. We've been able to compete in uh, all of them. So I'm very proud of our team for uh, really persevering and continuing to stay involved. Uh, we're all proud of your team as well. You know, we're, we are, you know, coming up, we're, it's about time to start unveiling the awards. But I just want to ask each of you, you know, uh, you're all in grade 12 now. Do you have any plans for the future that you'd like to share with us? And you don't have to share it, that's totally okay. Or anything your team's been working on that you'd like to promote, Amna? Um, yeah, um, this year, uh, our team has been working a lot with their Insta or our Instagram. So at 1374 Robotics, we have been posting a lot to just promote um, not just first, but our members, um, our past members, our mentors, um, also to advocate for just anything really happening in the world right now. Um, I know it's been like hard to connect with people, so we're trying to provide a source virtually. So if anyone has any suggestions, anything you would like to see, um, I have been told to inform everyone that our DMs are always open. So if there's anything specific that anyone would like to see or whatever it is, um, I think that's one place to go. And what's your Insta handle so the whole audience can follow all you? Um, it's 1374 Robotics. Nice. Tune in, tap that Very like simple. button, tap that follow Very button. Simple. <laughs> Very simple. I like yeah. it. Yeah. Ella, what about you or the Machine Mavericks or both? Yeah, um, so for me, I'm not quite sure yet where I'm going to go, but still waiting back to hear from a couple schools. Um, as for the team, uh, we're doing a lot of these remote instrumentation and robotics labs. So if you want to participate, definitely give us a shout. We're Team 7480, so we'd love to have you. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Thank you for having Very me. Great. No, thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing your story with the community. Lucas? The university, hopefully uh, either U of T or Waterloo. They're both really good schools, and I'm looking forward to going to each, uh, either which one. Uh, as for the team, we actually we are a bit of a smaller team compared to probably a lot of the other teams that are on here. So we aren't really doing anything that's noteworthy in a community aspect. We're basically just building a robot and having fun doing that. We don't do any, uh, like, outreach programs outside of Thunder Bay that anybody would be interested in. Hey. So sorry for a boring answer. And that's, Lucas, uh, that's it. No, that, that, no, Lucas, that's not a boring answer at all. And you know what? Like you're still, that's part of the program too. And teams got to do what's best for them. And, you know, building a robot is an incredibly huge challenge. So just doing that is a big, big enough deal. So glad you're enjoying things up in Thunder Bay. Uh, Colton. Yeah, thank you, Karthik. Um, I have, uh, I'm planning to go to uh, the University of Ottawa next year, so I'm really excited to go there. I'm looking forward to hopefully in the future seeing uh, that Ottawa FRC district event uh, that is uh, new, and I'm excited to be able to participate in that. Uh, but in terms of our team, I just would like to give a quick shout out to uh, three of the girls on our team uh, who've been doing amazing work throughout this pandemic. Uh, they formed uh, actually just recently Fem Innovations Inc. and they are working on a UV sterilizer, the Qubit, uh, which is a new and improved product of our UV, UV cube that we were able to send out last year. Uh, so I definitely encourage everyone to go uh, check it out, Google it. I unfortunately don't know the exact website, uh, but more information about it will be coming soon. They're just waiting on uh, approval from the proper organizations. That is super exciting. And then maybe one of the 1305 members in chat can drop that link into chat so everyone can get access to it. And Zara, to close us out. Um, just look out for R3P2 in the next few seasons. Um, we're really excited to come back after you know a break this year. And it's really sad. I haven't seen my team in probably a year and it really hurts, but look out for R3P2 in the next few years. <laughs> I, I'm sure we all will. So I just want to say thank you to all our 2020 Dean's List finalists and congratulations again on your win. I Enjoy your red hoodies. Wear them with pride wherever you end up next year and long into the future. And I can't wait to see all of you sometime at a first event, you know, maybe as volunteers. Colton, I'm counting on you for the, the Carlton event. Okay, buddy? All right, everyone. We'll thank you. you there. Thanks, right. everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
as we just saw, first Dean's List District Championship semifinalists are outstanding, passionate student leaders who demonstrate exemplary effectiveness at attaining first ideals. They were nominated by their teams for their direct contributions and impact on others, exemplifying leadership and commitment on the team and in their community. Let's take a moment to recognize all 49 Ontario Dean's List nominees. Starting with Lucy L, Team 771. Samantha T, Team 771. Emily W, Team 772. Jacob W, Team 772. Allison T, Team 865. Devin P, Team 865. Cushy P, Team 1241. Trey Valley B, Team 1241. Fiona T, Team 1305. Michelle D, Team 1305. Animal D, Team 1325. Francis B, Team 1325. Robert F, Team 1334. Zakir K, Team 1334. Michelle A, Team 1360. Pauline L, Team 1360. Haley M, Team 1374. Thomas W, Team 1374. Eric K, Team 2056. Vanshika B, Team 2056. Jacob T, Team 2706. Jeremy G, Team 2706. Logan M, Team 2852. Daniel R, Team 3161. Gerald F, Team 3161. Iona J, Team 3683. Kira B, Team 3683. Tyler S, Team 4069. Aiden O, Team 4343. Chris Starn T, Team 4343. Benjamin D, Team 4476. Gavin S, Team 4476. Yushin W, Team 4617. Avery M, Team 4783. Hassan A, Team 4783. Keegan S, Team 4946. Aiden L, Team 5032. Christian F, Team 5406. Nathan H, Team 5406. Srila C, Team 6135. UY, Team 6135. Julia M, Team 7456. Ethan S, Team 7475. Selena O, Team 7476. Olivia O, Team 7480. Joshua L, Team 7520. Ryan S, Team 7520. Sally J, Team 7659. And Sophia A, Team 7659. Congratulations to all our nominees. The first Dean's List District Championship semifinalist recognized today will move forward to compete for the honor of being named Ontario Provincial Championship Dean's List finalists. So now, the moment you've all been waiting for. Congratulations to the Ontario First Dean's List District Championship semifinalists, starting with Allison Thompson, Team 865, Work 7. Next winner, Kushi Patel from Team 1241, Theory 6. Third up, Fiona Frog from Team 1305, Ice Cube. Michelle Adams from Team 1360, Orbit Robotics. Vansha from Team 4056, OP Robotics. Jeremy Gray from Team 2706, Merge Robotics. Tyler Smith from Team 4069, Low Ellen Robotics. Chris Darn Thorne from Team 4343, Max Tech. Srila Chowdhury from Team 6135, Arctos. And Joshua Liu from Team 7520, Mind Key. 
congratulations to all our Ontario first Deansless District Championship semi-finalists. Woo! Great job, folks. That is a super talented group of individuals. I can't wait for all of them. And just a reminder, folks, you're going to be getting emails to your LEAP or Mentors 1 and 2 after this show with in instructions on how to proceed next and when the next round of interviews is coming. Because that's right, you're all competing to become Ontario Teens List finalists. Our next awards are the District Chairman's Awards. The Chairman's Award is the most prestigious award at first. It honors the team that best represents a model for other teams to emulate and best embodies the purposes and goals of FIRST. The Chairman's Award is presented to the team judged to have the most significant measurable impact of its partnerships among its participants and community over a sustained period, not just a single build season. The winner is able to demonstrate progress towards FIRST's mission of transforming our culture. Let's take a moment to recognize all 20 teams who interviewed for the District Chairman's Awards in Ontario this season. Team 771, SWAT. Team 772, Saber Bites Robotics. Team 865, Warp 7. Team 1305, Ice Cube. Team 1334, Red Devils. Team 1360, Orbit Robotics. Team 1374, Amped Up. Team 2056, OP Robotics. Team 2706, Merge Robotics. Team 3161, Tronic Titans. Team 3683, Team Day. Team 4039, Makeshift Robotics. Team 4069, Lowell Robotics. Team 4343, Max Tech. Team 4476, Waffles. Team 4617, Dawn. Team 5406, Celtax. Team 7476, EOM Lions. Team 7480, The Machine Mavericks. Team 7659, HNMCS Robotics. Tonight's winners will compete at the Provincial Championship level for two 2021 Ontario Provincial Championship Chairman's Awards. Here's what the judges have to say about tonight's first winner. This team exemplified first values with their contributions to their community and to the global society with their many projects. They have shown the judges that they managed to keep their positivity amongst a challenging year by always keeping a smile on their faces. This team has really taken a bite out of the pandemic this year. Congratulations to the team. 7-7 seven, seven, who? 7-7-2 seven, seven, Saber Bites Robotics. <laughs> And here's what the judges have to say about tonight's second winner. Like you would expect, this team puts extraordinary effort into ensuring the well-being of other first teams and their broader community. They have built an extensive network of support and partnerships with local and national organizations. In this past chaotic year, they were inspired to equip first teams with the knowledge to sustainably expand above and beyond. Congratulations to the team. 865 Warp 7! <laughs> and here's what the judges have to say about tonight's third winner. Demonstrating consistent, sustained excellence 
is the standard for a chairman's team, but it is the energy and continued creativity of this team that impress the judges the most. As blue as they are, they do not let the cold stop them and are continually looking for innovation while helping expand first. With their UV cube design, even COVID is on the run. Congratulations to team number 1305 Ice Cube. <laughs> This next team exemplifies excellence on and off the competition field in everything they do. From workshops seen worldwide to safety equipment for frontline workers, they are always sharing. In this past challenging year, they have brought all of us under their virtual roof and shared their code for success. Congratulations to the team 2056 OP Robotics. <laughs> And now for our final District Chairman's Award winner. They recognize that outreach across a global range of peoples by partnering with many city and health care organizations is both a means to spreading the first message and a way of ensuring their sustainability. This is a well-organized team with an impressive YouTube collection. The internet is nourished with multiple online training sessions and virtual workshops. This black and yellow team stands out in both the day and night. Congratulations to team 4476 Waffles! Folks, congratulations to all our winners and nominees. We can't possibly express how proud we are of all your accomplishments and can't thank you enough for everything you do for our community. Thank you to everyone who worked on tonight's show, from our producers, DJ Nick, Grab Productions, and the entire First Canada staff. But folks, this isn't goodbye. We will be back in May for the First Canada Digital Expo, where we'll be recognizing teams, volunteers, mentors, and more in a week-long celebration of First Canada and our community, culminating with our FLL and FTC Remote Provincial Championships and our FRC Provincial Awards Gala. Thanks to everyone for joining us in this online celebration. Teams, remember, you'll be getting information about the next round of interviews from your mentors coming very soon, right after the show. Everyone, we're going to see you back here soon. We miss you. Stay amazing and have a good night. Bye, everyone.